tissues. All living organisms are made up of cells. Most of these cells are specialized to carry out a few functions. Each specialized function is taken up by a different group of cells. Cells specializing in one function are often grouped together in the body. This means that a particular function is carried out by a cluster of a definite place in the body. This cluster of cells, called a tissue, is arranged so as to the highest and possible efficiency of function. Blood, phloem and muscle are all examples of tissues. Plant tissues. The growth of plants occurs only in certain specific regions. This is because the dividing tissue, also known as meristematic tissue, is located only at this point. Depending on the region where they are present, meristematic tissues are classified as apical, lateral and intercalary. New cells produced by meristem are initial like those of meristem itself, but as they grow and mature, their characteristics slowly change and they become differentiated as components of other tissues. Meristematic tissue Take two glass jars and fill them with water. Now, take two onion bulbs and place one on each jar as shown in figure. Observe the growth of roots in both the bulbs for a few days. Measure the length of roots on day 1, 2 and 3. On day 4, cut the root tips of the onion bulb in jar 2 by about 1 cm. After this, observe the growth of roots in both the jars and measure their lengths each day for 5 more days and record the observations in tables like the table below. The growth of plants occurs only in certain specific regions. This is because the dividing tissue, also known as meristematic tissue, is located only at these points. Depending on the region where they are present, meristematic tissues are classified as apical, lateral and intercalary. New cells produced by meristem are initially like those of meristem itself, but as they grow and mature, their characteristics slowly change and they become differentiated as components of other tissues. Simple permanent tissue. A few layers of cells form the basic packing tissue. This tissue is parenchyma, a type of permanent tissue. It consists of relatively unspecialized cells with thin cells. They are live cells. They are usually loosely packed. This tissue provides support to plants and also stores food. In some situations, it contains chlorophyll and performs photosynthesis and then it is called chlorenchyma. In aquatic plants, large air cavities are present in parenchyma to give buoyancy to the plants to help them float. Such a parenchyma type is called arenchyma. The flexibility in plants is due to another permanent tissue, colenchyma. It allows easy bending in various parts of a plant without breaking. It also provides mechanical support to plants. We can find this tissue in leafy stalks below the epidermis. The cells of this tissue is very little intercellular space. Another type of permanent tissue is Sclerenchyma. It is the tissue which makes the plant hard and stiff. We have seen the husk of a coconut. It is made of sclerenchymatous tissue. The cells of this tissue are dead. They are long and narrow as the walls are thickened due to lignin, a chemical substance which acts as cement and hardens them. This tissue is present in stems, around vascular bundles, in the veins of leaf and in the hard coverings of seed and nuts. It provides strength to the plant parts. Complex permanent tissue Complex tissue are made of more than one type of cells. All these cells coordinate to perform a common function. Xylem and phloem are examples of such complex tissues. They are both conducting tissues and constitute a vascular bundle. Vascular or conductive tissue is a distinctive feature of the complex plant, one that has made possible their survival in the terrestrial environment. 
section of a stem. Take a plant stem and with the help of your teacher, cut it into very thin slices or sections. Now, stain the slices with saffron. Place one neatly cut section on a slide and put a drop of glycerine. Cover with a cover slip and observe under a microscope. Observe the various types of cells and their arrangement. Compare it with figure. Observation A. Cells are not similar in structure. B. Various types of cells seen in the structure observation. Complex permanent tissue. Xylem consists of tracheids, vessels, xylem parenchyma and xylem fibers. The cells have thick walls and many of them are dyed cells. Tracheids and vessels are tubular structures. This allows them to transport water and minerals. Phloem is made up of four types of elements. Sieve tubes, companion cells, phloem fiber and the phloem parenchyma. Sieve tube are tubular cells with perforated walls. Phloem is unlike xylem in that materials can move in both direction in it. Phloem transports food from leaves to other parts of the plant. Except for phloem fibers, phloem cells are living cells. Epithelial tissue. The covering or protective tissues in the animal body are epithelial tissues. Epithelium covers most organs and cavities within the body. It also forms a barrier to keep different body systems separate. The skin, the lining of the mouth, the lining of blood vessels, lung alveoli and kidney tubules are all made of epithelial tissue. Epithelial tissue cells are tightly packed and form a continuous sheet. Squamous epithelium. Different epithelia show different structures that correlate with their unique functions. For example, in cells lining blood vessels or lung alveoli, where transportation of substances occurs through a selective permeable surface, there is a simple flat kind of epithelium. This is called the simple squamous epithelium. Simple squamous epithelial cells are extremely thin and flat and for a delicate lining. Skin epithelial cells are arranged in many layers to prevent wear and tear. Since they are arranged in a pattern of layers, the epithelium is called stratified squamous epithelial. Cuboidal epithelium. Cuboidal epithelium with cube-shaped cells forms the lining of kidney tubules and ducts of salivary glands where it provides mechanical support. Epithelial cells often acquire surface. Sometimes a portion of the epithelial tissue folds inward and a multicellular gland is formed. This is glandular epithelium. Connective tissue. Blood is a type of connective tissue. The cells of connective tissue are loosely spaced and embedded in an intercellular matrix. The matrix may be jelly-like, fluid, dense or rigid. The nature of matrix differs in coordinates with the function of the particular connective tissue. Blood Blood has a fluid matrix called plasma in which red blood cell, RBCs, white blood cells, WBCs and platelets are suspended. The plasma contains proteins, salts and hormones. Blood flows and transports gases, digested food, hormones and waste materials to different parts of the body. Bone is another example of a connective tissue. It forms the frameworks that supports the body. It also anchors the muscles and supports the main organs of the body. It is a strong and non-flexible tissue. Two bones can be connected to each other by another type of connected tissue called ligament. Areolar connective tissue Areolar connective tissue is found between the skin and muscles, around blood between the skin and muscles, around blood vessels and nerves, and in the bone marrow. It fills the space inside the organs, supports internal organs, and helps in repair of tissues. Where are fats stored in our body? Fat storing adipose tissue is found below the skin and between internal organs. 
The cells of this tissue are filled with fat globules. Storage of fats also lets it act as an insulator. Muscular tissue Muscular tissue consists of elongated cells, also called muscle fibers. This tissue is responsible for movement in our body. Muscles contain special proteins called contractile proteins, which contract and relax to cause movement. Muscles present in our limbs move when we want them to and stop when we so decide. Such muscles are called voluntary muscles. These muscles are also called skeletal muscles as they are mostly attached to bones and help in body movement. The movement of food in the alimentary canal or the contraction and relaxation of blood vessels are involuntary movements. Muscular tissue Smooth muscles or involuntary muscles control such movements. They are also found in the iris of the eye, in ureters and in the bronchi of the lungs. The muscles of the heart show rhythmic contraction and relaxation throughout life. These involuntary muscles are called cardiac muscles. Heart muscle cells are cylindrical, branched and uninucleate. Nervous tissue Nervous tissue is one of four major classes of vertebrate tissue. The function of the nervous tissue is in communication between parts of the body. It is composed of neurons which transmit impulses and the neuroglia which assist propagation of the nerve impulse as well as provide nutrients to the neuron. Every time you get pinched, part of your nerve tissue is damaged. All nervous tissue of an organism makes up its nervous system, which includes the brain, spinal cord and nerves throughout the organism. Nervous tissue is made of nerve cells that come in many varieties, all of which are distinctly characteristic by the axon or long stem-like part of the cell that sends active potential signals to the next cell. Nervous Tissue All cells possess the ability to respond to stimuli. However, cells of the nervous tissue are highly specialized for being stimulated and then transmitting the stimulus very rapidly from one place to another within the body. The brain Spinal cord and nerves are also composed of the nervous tissue. The cells of this tissue are called nerve cells or neurons. A neuron consists of a cell body with a nucleus and cytoplasm from which long, thin, hair-like parts arise. Usually, each neuron has a single long part called the axon and many short branched parts called dendrites. An individual nerve cell may be up to a meter long. Many nerve fibers bound together by connective tissue make up a nerve. Nerve impulses allow us to move our muscles when we want to. The functional combination of nerve and muscle tissue is fundamental to most animals. This combination enables animals to move rapidly in response to stimuli.